Hey, I'm Jack with Recipal, and today we're gonna to be talking about the shelf life of foods, how you can figure that out for your product, and how by following the proper guidelines, you can help avoid food waste. Now, date labels on foods aren't a new thing. It's been around for decades, it's just never been standardized at a federal level. After World War II, there was a shift from smaller grocery stores to larger chains that carried lots of packaged goods. The manufacturers would put codes on these products to let the grocers know when the inventory should be rotated. And people were really interested in this, so much so that they started putting out pamphlets trying to decipher these mystery codes. Once the industry realized that people cared a lot about this, they started to openly post the best buy dates. At first, this seemed like a great shift for consumer awareness and safety, but the lack of standardization created confusion. And all the different naming conventions led to lots of food waste. Here's some of the things you might have seen on packaged foods. Sell by, use by, best by, better if used by, display until, best when used by, fresh until, enjoy by, best before, user freeze by, best if used by, expires on, better if used before. As you can see, all of these options can create confusion. And what that leads to is a lot of wasted food. It's estimated that in the US, more than 30% of all food is wasted. And a lot of that is actually due in part to the food labeling and people throwing out perfectly good food. It's important to note that except for infant formula, product dating is not required at the federal level. So in almost all cases, product dating refers to the quality and not the safety of the product. As a manufacturer, you want your consumer to get the best experience to protect your brand and to help your company grow. So it's important to provide that information, but it's also important not to confuse the consumer that the product needs to be thrown out after that date. To help remove confusion, the FDA is supporting efforts to standardize the term best if used by when the date simply refers to the optimal quality and not the safety. Studies have shown that this phrase best conveys that the food does not have to be discarded past the date as long as it's been stored properly. So now that you know a bit of the history of date labels and the correct phrases to use, the next question is what date should go on your product? There's a few methods you can use to figure this out. The first one is to look at competitors' products. If you can find a product with similar ingredients, similar packaging, and similar ways that it's stored and produced, then you can use that as a baseline to help you determine the date that should go on your product. Obviously, you should go beyond this to try to figure it out and fine tune it for your own product, but it's a great starting point to help you figure it out. The second thing that you can do is to run a test yourself. You can figure this out by simply storing samples of your product and testing them over time. Now it's important that they're stored in the same way, produced in the same way, and packaged in the same way that a real consumer product would be. Once you start to see the quality change in any way, then you have your best if used by date. So a really important note about running your own tests is that you wanna make sure you have enough samples. You can use that competitive analysis to get a baseline of how long you might have to run a study, add a little bit of a buffer on there, and then multiply the number of weeks your study is going to run by the amount of times you'll be testing your samples per week. So if you were to run a 10-week study and test once every two weeks, you'd need five samples. If you're running that same study and testing once a week, you'd obviously need 10 samples. And if you were going to test twice a week, you'd need 20 samples. As you're testing these samples, you're going to want to take detailed notes and photographs, and you may even want to run some basic chemical tests. Does your food product require a certain pH? You can get a basic pH tester for around $40 and start testing that out yourself. You might be asking the question, what if my product has a stable shelf life and it would take years of study to figure out when the quality starts to degrade? Well, that's where a lab could come in handy. They could accelerate the process and mimic one month of shelf life in a fraction of the time. While labs have commercial grade equipment that can test spoilage at a microbial level, they're also a lot more expensive. And since the best if used by date is really a subjective measure, sometimes an informal study is exactly what you need. Understanding shelf life protects your brand by making sure consumers get the best version of your product. 
It also helps you manage inventory by knowing the appropriate rates to produce and release your product. This will maintain great relationships with your retailers and distributors. Lastly, it helps make sure food isn't discarded before it's actually gone bad. Now, I've been guilty of going through my kitchen and throwing out anything that had a date that's passed on it. And the case is that you should really just use your own senses, if stored correctly, to determine whether the food is bad or not. Because in almost all cases, the date label is the one where you're gonna get the optimal taste, optimal experience, but is not a safety concern. So I'm gonna put that to the test myself. When trying to determine if a product's actually gone bad, you should use your senses. You should smell it, you should look at it, see if there's any changes in color or odor or texture. Um, and I know if I go through my kitchen, I'm gonna probably find a few things that fall into this category. So let's give it a test. So at the beginning of the pandemic, when all the grocery stores were running out of every product and people were freaking out, I did the same thing and went, oh, got to reach in the back and bought a product I normally wouldn't get because we just don't eat that often, which is this linguine that's just been sitting at the back of my cabinet, you know, for the past three years, I guess. So let's take a look at this. Okay. Best before 12 one, 22. So we're a year past this date, which as we know is not the expiration date, but just the date for best optimal quality. So let's give it a test. Normally I would run through my cabinets and my refrigerator and just be throwing stuff out, but maybe this product is good and I can do my part to stop contributing to food waste. All right, let's see. Okay, so here's my uh, pasta linguine that is seven months past the best if used by date, and we're gonna give it a go. Now, when I took it out of the box, it smelled normal, it looked normal, so let's see how it is. I mean, it tastes fine. Um, I don't know that it's any worse, or I could say it's any worse than um, if it was not past the expiration date. But it's definitely good and definitely good enough to eat. 